All right, y'all. So, like I promised, I know I'm uh, about a day late on this, but uh, I wanted to go over just, you know, some basic market stuff here um, for the week ahead. You know, so I, I just want to admit, too, that this is all very tricky right here. Uh, I, I really have no idea exactly where we're going. And, you know, I, I could really see this going one of two ways right we either break down or or we continue back up you know there, there's i'm just going to kind of point out a few things as to you know different scenarios or, or what may happen you know market structure stuff like that right so you know middle of last week sbx came down this is a major trend line right here this is the low from october of 2022 and then the march low of this year all right so we came down and tagged that trend line uh, last Wednesday and had a nice bounce out of it, right? Got some follow through on Thursday, Friday after the data, got the gap up, but we sold down the entire day, right? Um, Could have just been some benign profit taking, right? We kind of just ran up to test this August low and got rejected down from there. And, you know, we came shy of hitting this 200 period moving average down here, right, in this 4200 area. And that was, you know, in the back of my head, kind of the area where I was watching for us to to retest after running up to 4600. That 4600 area was like a big caution area for me, right? And, you know, I should have just went outright short long-term options from that area, but, you know, it, it is what it is. But from there, I was looking for a potential retest of the breakout area. I mean, you can see the 4,200 area, how many times we got a, re a reaction off of that area, right? I mean, we've got, you know, multiple here, multiple here, right? Um, quite a few in this area, right? Um, here's another one here, another reaction here, another one, then you see, you know, around... April to May, we were just consolidating in this tight range, right? And this was just the frustration point for a lot of people until we finally broke out of that range, right? Um, and then from there, we marched up 400 points to 4,600, right? So we're now, you know, we've since, since the end of July, we've cooled off, right? This is kind of, you know, getting some of that market froth out of here, Um you know, one thing to point out is, you know, we're still below this trend line here, right? We've we made a low, we made a, a lower high, we made a lower high here. You know, who, who's to say that this is just a dead cat bounce here, right? Um, but we are hitting this trend line, and it's possible that this is the low for now. You know, seasonality says we could have some more weakness i think in the first two weeks here and then it's pretty strong from like mid-october into the rest of the year right um so you know let me just kind of go down. i'm gonna go over a few things here so the dow jones uh index is below the 200 period moving average not a great look here right so if if we want to be bullish again. I'd like for it to get back above this 34,000 area. Okay. Um, it's just not a good look to be trading below the 200 period moving average on the Dow. Just pointing that out. Uh, SMH. Okay. These are the semiconductors, the ETFs, right? So we, we've been in this bullish channel for a while now. Um, and we've had one, two, three... Now, this is the fourth touch of this bullish channel. Channel We had a little bit of a, a break below it for a few days here, but we've reclaimed it. So if we can get follow-through back up above this trend line and maybe come back up to the 156 area, um, especially if we can get above 152, um, this is going to bode well for the market and specifically tech. When SMH does well, you know, triple Q tends to do very well as well. Um, you know, just a different look on the SPY. You know, same thing as the SPX, hitting that major trend line um, just 
above the 200 period moving average you know but definitely open to us testing the 200 period moving average still and uh that 420 area right so if that is to happen you know i think we need to get back below 425 39 okay um which we're not too far away so this is all just kind of i'm just gonna have to read this in real time as this pops up but uh you know, I just, like I said, I'm just kind of playing it, playing it by ear right now, playing it day by day. Um, I do have some end of year positions in place, um, but I also have some hedges in place in case we continue down. So I've got some, some downside plays for October, but I've got some January call, sp call spreads for the SPY and a few other names. Um, so I want to look at the RSP. All right, this is the equal weight s p right so you see we're still trading below i'm oh, sorry we're still trading below this trend line here okay we're below the 200 period moving average well below it but we did hit this major pivot level here in this 140 area and we've been bouncing right so um if this continues back up we can definitely retest the underside of the 200 period 200 period moving average or the underside of this trend line right and if the rsp continues up then so can the spy and you know the rest of the market in general um you know but until this trend line breaks you know this is still kind of a sell the rip environment on the rsp let's look at the new york stock exchange composite index so similar story right we have a major trend line that we just tested and we did get a little bit of a bounce from it we are trading below the 200 period moving average on this one also so you know not a great look but it could be another you know look below and reclaim like these two scenarios here which we saw earlier this year um in may and in march okay so got to be open to that possibility as well i would like to see us reclaim 15 6 600 on the uh, nyse or the nya um if we break below uh 15 288 won't be a good sign won't be a good look for the rest of the market the dxy okay another important one that we like to look at uh, still kind of trading in this bullish channel right here, okay? Um, you know, we've been, we broke above this trend line here, this yellow one right here, uh, since like mid-August. Um, and it's just been kind of cotton, put a lot of pressure on the rest of the market and especially gold. Um, so we've seen a, quite a big pullback in gold. I'm mean, watching for that. 1850 area to get tagged um <clears throat> and if dxy can cool off we can get a bounce in both gold and the markets um so it was starting to look like a legit reversal uh last week you know we had a bearish uh, candle here on thursday first time we made a lower low in like seven sessions um so we had a lower high and a lower low same thing on this one but we did kind of get a lot of buyers down here showed up in the upper 105s the 105 70 area um if we get back above i would say yeah so we get back above 106 40 on the dxy this can continue back up if we can break down from this bullish channel that's going to look good for the bulls for the spx and the rest of the market so i'm going to be watching for that so the level for me really to break is that 105 right around that 105.435 area um for the dxy if we can break below 105.4 i think the bulls are going to come back out to play for the spx so we'll keep that on watch uh, if we get back above 106.40 area on the DXY, you know, likely to see more selling to come for both the market and uh, and gold. Let's look at TNX, right? So we hit, again, same thing. 
we've been in this uh, bullish channel for the TNX, which has been putting on a lot of pressure on tech, and we've been above that since uh, since the end of June, right? And we hit, we really broke out of it the beginning of July, and then back tested it, and then we've just been grinding up ever since. Now we did recently hit the top of this channel uh, up here at the on thursday and we kind of rejected down from it and same thing we continued down on friday but the bull showed up and pushed it back up so we kind of got this hammer candle here um you know maybe they fill the gap here and then possibly reject down i don't know this is something i'm going to be watching as well um ideally i'd like to see dxy break down from its uh bullish channel and tnx also um, it's also possible we come down to fill this gap right there, right here um, at the 4.365 area, right? And if that happens, we can get at least a relief bounce uh, further for the triple Qs. Um, but like I said, for continued upside and confidence in the bulls, I'd like to see TNX break down from this bullish channel. Uh, the Dow Jones transportation average um, did hit its 200 period moving average and had a very nice bounce off of it almost perfectly. Um, Thursday had a good follow through and then Friday, similar story, you know, it had that gap up and then it sold off kind of for the rest of the day. Um, you know, and, and here's another interesting point about the transportation average is you know since the end of july beginning of august it broke this uptrend here and really the market's been kind of weak ever since then right so this is just another thing that i look at when i'm gauging overall market strength right so what i want to see on the dow jones transportations is i want to see this break above this trend line here okay um, and preferably break above 15,460, okay? Um, so we can put in a higher high here. Um, and that will kind of confirm to me that we will be kind of heading into the rest of the year with some strength. Let's look at... So I want to look at... We'll, we'll take a look at VIX. Okay, so... VIX kind of hit this 18 area, right? And we had that rejection. And we looked like we were going to break above that 18 area and break out above towards 25. And we rejected right back below. And actually, we're right back below the 200 period moving average on this. So if the VIX can break back below Friday's low, this is going to look better for the bulls as well. Right, and if that happens, then we likely test this 13 area, and that can really get uh, the bulls back out for the SPX as well. Um, I want to look at the ES as well. Okay, um, so you know, again, similar story hit the trend line, got a nice bounce, we didn't quite hit the 200 period moving average. Um, you know, we had a very good balance. I mean, we hit 42.77 and went up to 43.71, so almost a 100-point bounce, right? So you're bound to get some pullback after bouncing 100 points after we've had, you know, this overall weakness, right? And it kind of makes sense that we rejected from 43.71 uh, because that's kind of the breakdown area uh, right Gosh, the breakdown area right here okay so you know in hindsight it was an obvious shorts um but you know um ch -ch -ch -ch. now as long as another so the other thing is we are trading in this bearish channel right here right so he had a, a high here made a low made a high made a low here so we're kind of at this like intersection here of this uh major trend line and the bottom of this bearish channel right so ideally i'd like to see us bounce up maybe to the middle of this channel like to the 4400 area uh, but we'll need to break 4371 in order to do that what i don't want to see is us failing back below 4300 right 
because if we start failing back below 4300 and then breaking this low then it's going to start looking like we will we'll be breaking this trend line and we will be likely tagging the 200 period moving average right so you know watch out for a break below 4300 on the es um and then a break below 4277 will put us in 4225 ish area okay so you know something to keep an eye on um if we break below 4300 and 4277 look for downside towards the 200 period moving average if we reclaim 4350 um which is around the value area low um since the most recent breakdown i think we can go back up to 4370 and then above that we can hit uh 4400 at least and possibly up to 4420 um so you know we're just gonna have to play it by ear uh oh yeah tlt was the other one i wanted to look at so cats pointed this out um so we do have a little bit of bullish divergence on the TLT okay um, this is a good spot for me to add commons on the TLT uh, definitely acknowledging that we can come down into this 82 area but uh, this was strong buying here on Thursday um, you know down in the low eight or yeah down the low 87s um, and then we came all the way up to 89.49 on Friday and then kind of sold off. Um, you know, definitely possible we retest the lows, but if we can get back above uh, 89.49, then I am definitely looking for a retest of this 43 area, which is also a gap fill. So, you know, if, if the TLTs can... Uh, can show some strength and the overall market can show some some strength as well um so the other thing i wanted to look at was the mmtw okay so this is another good indicator for us um we hit <clears throat> into my buy zone here on tuesday you know but obviously we kind of sold off some more into Wednesday and then had that strong rally out of it, you know, from there. So once, you know, once we're in this lower range on the MMTW, which is stocks um, above their 20 period moving average. So this is a percentage of stocks above their 20 period moving average, right? So only 17.25% uh, uh, of stocks were above their 20 period moving average as of Tuesday, okay? Um, and we've been rotating up since then. Uh, MMFI is another one that I use, and this is just the 50 period moving average. Um, when we get down into this lower range here, usually good for a longer term swing, right? Um, and I'll show you what I mean here. I'll pull up SBX and uh, you know compare and contrast the two, right? So you can see, I'll just go back here in recent... In the last year or so so back here in may we were in this lower range and we got a decent bounce on the sbx you can see down below um hit it again in june of 2020 in 2022 and then had a very strong rally until we hit the upper range of this okay you can see sbx down below so sbx actually went from like 36.74 to 4300 which is a pretty significant bounce and that was in the course of two months right and then oh, and then from there it sold off into the end of september and the middle of october and so we ended up hitting you know like the 3500 to 3600 range on sbx and then that caught a major low because sbx went back up to 4,000 from there. As you saw, I got up into this upper range on MMFI and then came down, never really tested the lower end of the range, but then it came back up to the top 
and you can see you know SPX down below kind of cause it to slide a little bit and then same thing got down towards the lower end of that range SBX came back up from 3900 to damn near yeah 4600 so this is recently here in July okay so it's a pretty good thing to keep an eye on in my opinion right so here we are now oh here we are now in this range okay so this to me is is at least saying we need to be cautious on the short side right and be mindful of a bounce right and typically over the last few years when we get down in this range a bounce happens over the next two to three months and on average it's about a 15 percent bounce right so you know this is a good spot in my opinion to maybe add some like call debit spreads with you know being managed you know manage your risk don't oversize it right because this is you know doesn't always play out perfectly but you know give yourself like four months to expiration and do some call debit spreads 20 deltas right or you can do the short strikes up at 15 percent above from where we're trading now and then put the long strikes maybe five points below that um because like i said on average we can expect to see 15 percent upside uh from here right so actually let me pull this back up so if the average return on uh on the es is 15 percent where does that put us so since we hit it uh so that was that was actually tuesday oh So where, based on that, where does that put us? Seems kind of ridiculous, but 15% upside from here is about 4,900. And that would put us there... Um, by the you know either end of november or the end of december right you know I'm, I'm definitely skeptical of that happening but that's what the past data is potentially suggesting right i'll be happy if we get back up to 4700 that was kind of my end of year target for me personally was 4700 but if we get up to 4900 you know <laughs> i'll be shocked but it'll be pretty incredible because i i'll have some uh some upside uh, spreads up there, SBX butterflies, just to capture that, just in case. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much most of what I wanted to go over today. Um, you know, the only other thing I maybe wanted to talk about was Bitcoin showing a little bit of strength here, okay? Um, at 25,000 levels, very strong, very, very strong. Um, so this is looking like possibly uh, Bitcoin wanting to test that 30K level. And if Bitcoin continues to show strength, that's also going to help the markets as well. So, you know, again, a lot of mixed signals here. It's tough for me to tell you guys exactly where we're going. But, um, you know, I, I do gun to my head. I'm kind of leaning towards possible like one more retest of the lows or slightly undercutting the lows and re-tagging that 200 period moving average on the ES or SPY or SPX and then going up to, into the end of year from there. Um, so, you know, we're just going to have to see where we're at and, uh, you know, where we're at this week. And, I'll, you know, I'll keep you guys posted as the week goes on. But uh, that's all I have for you, for you guys today. I hope you had a good weekend, and uh, I'll see you guys on Monday.